In this video, I'm going to install this pet door panel into my sliding glass patio door. There are some challenges because all sliding doors are not alike. Welcome everyone. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark and this is the Average Me channel. And in this video, I'm going to try to install a panel in my sliding glass patio door to allow my cats to enter and leave the lanai. It might look like it's already in place, but it is just held in there by tension right now. I wanted to see how it fit. So I'm gonna point out a few things before we get started. The first thing is this top panel here is spring loaded. So this moves up and down, and this is what allows me to just temporarily Put this in place and the door comes with a heavy pet door flap that magnetizes down here and I'm taking that out for a while until the cats learn how to use it it's awful heavy for a cat probably a good weight for a dog and this is it right here and you can see that bottom has a magnet that sticks to it when it opens and closes there's a couple of things I have to address right away the first is this. This is a sensor for my alarm system. Well, that's going to be in the way of the installation. So I had to take that off. So it'll just tuck inside here until I'm ready to reconnect the alarm system. There was also a lock here. So this latch has to come off because this channel has to be nice and smooth. There is going to be a gap in here. So I'm going to have to buy some kind of a sealant. I think I know what I'm going to do for this, but there is even another problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in place. Here is the spring mount I told you about. This is a triple track door because this is for lanai and it will fit up to three doors. So I'm going to have to figure out exactly how I want this to work. And I think what I'm going to do is center it right over this first track. You can see there's a ridge right there at the bottom. That has to fit over the track. So it fits in just like that. Now I could have put it either to the left or right, but I like it being on the center because it gives it a little more stability. Looking at the top, I could have put this on the inside, the outside, or in the middle. It seems to center itself pretty well where I have it right there. But there is a little bit of a problem with how straight this frame is. You can see when the door is flush, a little gap opens up. And then when we get to the bottom, it's flush once again. And I checked this with a straight edge. And it's this insert piece that bows out a little bit. The door edge is actually pretty straight. What I'm going to have to do is put some kind of rubber stripping in there to make up for that. As far as the lock, I can probably reattach that latch right here when I'm done installing. So let's get started. First thing we have to do is stabilize the spring loaded piece. And you can see there's little holes there. So what I'm going to have to do is straighten that out, drill a hole through there and put a screw through and we'll do that on the other side. It's hidden over here, but we'll do that on both sides. So now that's nice and secure on both sides. Make sure you pick up any drill shavings. You don't want your cat or dog to get into that. Now this can still slide around top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is close the door and try to get it as snug as it can before I do the next step. So that looks about right. We still have that gap there and we will address that. But right now, we know that it's pretty plumb with the door. So the next step is to secure it in place with this bracket. So we're gonna screw the bracket into the frame and then screw it onto this framework here. Be really careful, mine has a lot of latitude because the framework itself doesn't start till here, so I can drill into this part safely. If your door comes up higher, be careful that you are not drilling into this half of the frame, because this half of the frame 
may have glass behind it. So I held my bracket in place. This bracket is included. And I marked the holes right there and there with a Sharpie where I'm going to drill. All right, now I'm going to check this door for plumb before I screw the final hole in. Got a little dirt rubbed off there from the rubber of the drill chalk. I hope that comes off. Okay, so it's nice and secure and the door comes up to it rather nicely as well. Now let's do that again at the bottom. You may be wondering why I put that on the outside rather than the inside. Well, because the inside just doesn't fit very well because of the width of this track. It just fit better on the outside, which is exactly why I'm not putting it here. I have to drill on this part of the frame so I don't hit any glass. This isn't going to work very well, so I'm going to see how it fits on the outside. Well, that looks pretty good. Now I have to see if the door will track over it. Yep, this will work. One of the problems I'm running into in drilling that hole is there is this tile directly underneath. And I can feel the bit hitting that tile. There's not much room there, fortunately. These are not very deep screws, so I think we're gonna be okay. So there we go, and it works just fine. A Little bit of overlap there, but that's okay. That bracket goes right underneath the door. Now I have a decision to make about the original door latch. Do I want to put it on or not? Well, the latch is in the center and this insert is only attached at top and bottom. It isn't attached along the side. So I'm concerned if someone were to take and yank that, it could pull the whole centerpiece with it. But I think I might put it back simply because it's the only locking mechanism I have right now unless I come up with something different or create something. Now they did come up with a little latch that they provide. It's not going to work with my door and I'll show you why. So this is a latch they provide. Essentially what you do is you put it somewhere and then you can either move it backward or forward into a hole in the frame. Unfortunately, mine really won't work because you can see there's really no place I can attach that. I'm not going to drill it into the, my floor tile and I really, there's no other place where I can mount this. Now I could put it here, but in theory that would be more of a notch than a hole unless I really lowered it by putting it on another plate or something. So I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So I think I'll just mount the original latch plate and see how it works. If it becomes problematic, well, I'll take it off. Latch is in place. So all that's left is to deal with that gap. And I think I have just the thing, this rubber seal. It's a half inch, perfect width. I found this on Amazon, pretty cheap. I think it was only about $8. Everything that you see here today is on Amazon. That's where I got my door. That's where I got the seal and a few other things. And I will link to them down below. This is a 3M product. It's got self-adhesive seems to stick really well. So as we close that door, not only does it create a barrier from it slamming, but now no more gap. Look at that. And I can still latch the door. So looks really good. There is a little gap here. So I'm gonna try something. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna put some spline this is just a rubber tube and it's used to repair window screens. So I'm going to put some in this on either side to try to hold that in a little more tightly and give it a little more uh, weather resistance. I'm just going to push that in with a screwdriver the entire length of the frame. Now, I don't know if that's going to do any good or not. It's not in the instructions. I did notice the space there. I thought it could use some tightening up. I had the spline lying around. So I tried it. Seems to work. It's well hidden. If it pops out, no harm done. There is one last thing. 
you can see there's a gap here because now the door can't shut all the way so it doesn't meet up with either the matching door, a stationary door, or a frame. So we have to fill that gap. They did include something to accommodate that. It's this rubber flap, long, long strip. It's also by 3M, so I assume it's good quality. You can see that there is uh, stickiness on one side. There's an adhesive. You stick that to the moving door, and then this rubber blade kind of acts almost like a windshield wiper on a car, and it moves back and forth with the door keeping that gap covered. So I'll put that on now and show you the end result. So there it is. And you can see it maintains a really good seal. The whole length of this. Very nice. And there we go. Completely finished. There is one other thing I have to show you. You saw that I removed the flap intentionally. But if you ever want to close this door up, it comes with this nice door. And it does lock in place with that latch right there, spring loaded. And so when you don't want the pets going in and out, you lock it. Otherwise, you can leave it open. And of course, you can have that rubber magnetic flap in place. I may or may not put that back, we'll see. Who knew you could get a pet door for a sliding glass door? I hope you enjoyed this project. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner. And don't forget to ring that bell icon up above. That way you'll know when I post new videos. Thanks again. I'm Mark, and this is The Average Me Channel.